fellas. <laughs> Dude, what okay. the fuck? Whoa. This <laughs> sucks. Whoa. I keep breaking end mills every time I run them in or on this <laughs> ink canal. Oh, hang on, time out. It's Dave's ink canal. It's, it's. I don't give a <laughs> fuck who's ink canal it is. It's a. Oh. I got something. you. I got you. Let me let me get a guy in here. I know a guy that I think can really help with this. All right. While we're gonna give Mike a minute to cool down, I'm gonna introduce you to the man. The man is Steve. Steve is from Fullerton Tool, and is he's here to save Caffrey from quitting his job, and hopefully to get this job up and running the way it should be. Steve, I hope you got a lot of information to help us out here. We can help you, Mom. Yeah. This is easy. Let's do it. All right, Mike, tell me what's going on. I'm trying to cut on this ink canal here with this tiny little groove. We tried doing it on the lathe with a groover, and that destroyed that. Every end mill that we have in-house that I've tried only makes it about halfway through. I'm plunging it as deep as it'll go for the full depth and going at about 5,500 for an RPM at 40 inches a minute. Nothing, nothing I try is working. I think I got an answer for you. I think this is gonna take a little finesse. Maybe step it in in like 10% increments, something like that. Let's let's drive it down, maybe a rough finish. We'll uh, use a Fullerton Fury. So Fullerton's Micro Fury is eccentric relief, variable spacing okay. with our FC20 coating. Oh. Uh, perfectly situated for this ink canal job. I might recommend a rough finish fast. So okay. we'll go in, we'll run it in. And then we'll tool change, and we'll go in and finish it up to depth with a fresh cutter. All right. I think it should work real well. Okay. Okay. We'll give it a shot. All right, Steve, I did what you suggested. I got a five and a half thou set down. Perfect. Going at about 5.3 inches a minute. Seems to be holding up really, really well now. Good. Uh, Getting ready to make that finish pass on there. I, I don't see any problems, so everything right. you suggested is working out pretty good. Perfect. I think we had just too long of an arm, right? You got a lot of bending moment on that tool, trying to take that full depth. Right. So we're just being a little nicer to it, a little finesse. You got a really good situation with that offset index. Kind of kills that harmonics a little bit, allows you to go in and destabilize the tool. Everything that I've been seeing is working really good. We went from Running one or two there, everything was breaking. To, you can see we're actually into production now, which is a good thing. Yeah. We've only used one or two so far, which is pretty good for that yeah. stack of parts That's on it. That's fantastic, now. yeah. So a lot of those, the Micro Fury type stuff, it's gonna be eccentric relief, which is a self-supporting cutting edge. It allows it to take a little a little dullness, but, but build behind the edge so it, it holds up really nicely. And then the eccentric relief, so, Instead of being a 90 degree fluting, it's more of an X design where you have too close to uh, two spaced a little further. And it just breaks that high, that harmonics, the vibration, kind of stabilizes the tool a little. You can push them a little harder. Uh, the FC20 does a fantastic job in both wet and dry applications. So of course you wouldn't run Inconel dry, right. but uh, in, a, in an application where you know, you're running some steel or something, a nice air blast, it uh, hot hardens and oxidizes really well. So we, uh, we like that. And then with our in-house coating capabilities, we can actually tailor those in the chamber to make sure we get less coating on a micro edge so you're not rounding the edge over to keep the end mill sharp. If you have a, if you have a, a tight tolerance on a larger tool, it becomes even more imperative when you shrink that down oh, to 10% of what you originally started. The, the tolerances become closer, the fallout you know, in manufacturing becomes becomes greater. You know, smaller tools, the detail that goes into them, they take a little longer to run than a bigger tool. So after our rough pass, it's gonna come in and it's gonna check to make sure that that tool isn't broke. We haven't had it stop on it yet, so that's a good sign too, before it'll bring in our finisher. And, Cause that was one of the biggest problems as we were running, it was breaking our other tooling and it would run the whole cycle. Right. Ended up with a scrap part in the end. Right. So I think the industry better understands Ink Canal today. Uh, it's not so scary, so taboo. Uh, there's more and more parts running Ink Canal. Um, so so mid 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 size smaller shops um, are seeing more and more in that you know later tier development, and uh, the technology, the tooling's getting better. Once you start 
and you get confident with with the the ink canals, you'll run them all the time. It's a it's a good profit center for your facility. So right now we're on that last pass. It's just about ready to go and check the unknown. Nice. You can check out the park. Right. All right, Steve, so this is the one we just pulled out. You can see how nice it runs all the way around here. A really good finish, no burr. Yeah, it looks good. It looks um, good. Compared to what, this is what we had in the first place. You can see where the groover was breaking down, the mismatch you're getting from trying to line that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, perfect. How many parts has you, have you run so far? I've ran about 20 parts or so with two end mills. So oh, that's perfect, right? It's working out really good well. value there. All right, thanks, Steve, for showing us everything we needed to learn on ink and all today. Oh, hang on. I don't think we're done. Trevor said we had another problem over here. If viewers want to see how we handle it, like and subscribe. Tune into the next video. We're going to show you how to make it work. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Threw me off. <laughs>